Hey guys, so today I wanted to talk to you about something that definitely takes a lot of strength to try to talk about. A lot of you in the past knew that I've had some health issues. They've kind of altered my life, they've changed my perspective on everything, and the intensity of those health issues kind of comes and goes. I'm not gonna lie, just trying to talk to you about this is giving me a little bit of anxiety. When I was a kid, I kind of raised myself. I had to deal with a lot of my problems by myself internally, and it's not that I bottled up emotions, it's just that I kind of had to learn how to grow from them on my own. So growing up, I dealt with things very internally. I don't know how to explain that without sounding like I bottle up the issues, but it's I don't bottle them up. I don't push them aside and, and not deal with them. I just deal with them by myself. That's just kind of how I've lived, so when I talk about things that are more personal, um, I get really anxious. I feel, I get a little stressed out, and I think part of it is because no matter how hard you try to explain certain things, if you haven't gone through health problems in your life, it's really hard to understand what it's like and how, how drastically it really affects you and your mental health, your physical health, all of it. It's it's hard to put yourself out there and talk about something so intimate and be scared of the response back. Do you know what I'm saying? I think in some way it may be therapeutic and relieving to just let it out, to tell you guys the things that I've dealt with, to be completely translucent with you guys because that's ultimately my goal and it always has been. I'm human just like everybody else. I have problems just like everybody else. I don't want you to think that I'm this picture of perfection. I am no better than you. I, I'm, I'm me. That's it. So another reason why I kind of struggle to talk about my health problems, not only because I find it hard to open up and release, okay, Luke is barking, to release something so intimate um, is, I struggle with finding positivity in my health problems. I go through waves. Um, go through months of positivity and knowing that I'm strong enough to make it through all these issues and then you know that one thing happens and it pulls you down and then you're at your lowest of lows for a couple weeks before you can find a positive way to get yourself back up there and keep moving forward. So for me, in order to talk to you guys about it, I felt like I had to be this inspirational person to have something magical to tell you guys to to motivate you and everything and it's not that I don't have positive outlooks on stuff but I'm I'm not always the picture of positivity I think I started to realize that I don't need to be that in order to talk to you guys about it I just need to be me so what prompted me to finally make a video about this and yes I'm sorry about the general appearance you'll know why soon about two days ago it was was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. I was just chilling. I was editing stuff. I was trying to get things together online for the channel and I sneezed. And you know, that's like a totally normal thing. You sneeze and it's not that big of a deal, right? But uh, this time it was a huge deal. I guess when you sneeze, you're really supposed to sneeze directly in front of you and like grab your face and hold it in place. But I didn't do that because I didn't want to sneeze on my computer, so I sneezed to the left and down, which I can't even turn my head that far down right now. And I immediately knew something was wrong because I heard, I think there's dog hair, I heard a loud pop and I felt it. Immediately there was this shooting pain all through the right shoulder, and I mean sharp you guys i don't know if any of you have had nerve pain or muscle pain or joint pain anything like that you know what i'm talking about sharp like someone put shards of glass in your shoulder and i can't really turn my head to the right i can't look down and i can't i can't do a whole lot of movements with my head thankfully i think it's just i tore a muscle or a ligament or something in there and that'll take at least a month to heal. That kind of prompted me to talk to you guys about all the health issues I have, just so you know what to expect in the future, that these things will happen from time to time where I may get injured and I might not be able to post videos as often as I do now. 
There are some days where I deal with chronic pain and I just cannot even function normally. So I don't think I'm ever going to be the type of person that can absolutely post something every day. I just can't, you guys. I can't. And it's not that I don't want to. I love hanging out with you guys. I love seeing your responses and commenting back to you. It's just my body can only handle so much and, and I am so appreciative for how patient you guys actually are. You have been so awesome to me, really so supportive. And I guess I should just get into when it all started for me. So at the age of 22, I was a perfectly healthy individual. I could do anything I put my mind to, yoga, done, lifting weights, done, running, done, swimming, hiking, you know, everything. I never had a limit to what I could do. I've never experienced that before in my life. And when you don't have health problems, you really don't think about your body at all. Ignorance is bliss, right? I mean, of course there are people out there that really care about their bodies and they try to be healthy and stuff, so they, they do think about them. But when I was a kid, you know, I'm young, I didn't really think about what I put my body through. At 22, I was totally healthy, and then 23 came along. At 23, I was working in a sales associate, you know, type of environment, but for some reason this job decided they really wanted me to help stock at the same time, even though I didn't apply for that position. Uh, and so I had to carry a lot of heavy things, and I don't know if you guys see me and understand how small I truly am. I have no arm muscle. I mean, like, seriously, there's no arm muscle there. So all of this lifting, I progressively could feel my body kind of breaking down a little bit. I was sore for days after I did it and I made numerous complaints saying I can't be doing this stuff. You know, they laugh and they shrug it off. And I know what you guys are gonna say, you should have applied for workers comp. Something should have happened, but I didn't. Just know that ahead of time. I didn't, it's in the past, whatever. So there was one time in particular where I remember having to lift these cast iron stools. And when I think about it now, how I was lifting those stools was just all sorts of wrong, but I didn't know any better and I shouldn't have been lifting them in the first place. So I remember going home and feeling absolutely awful for the next couple days and then at this point in my life I really tried to stay healthy so I still tried to work out as often as I could and it was like the icing on top of the cake. I was doing a plank and the second I got up from that position I knew something was horribly wrong. My neck felt like it was on fire. I mean absolute fire, it hurt so bad. I couldn't turn my head, period, any direction. I couldn't sit upright without intense pain, which if you can't sit upright, you literally can't do anything. So I went to tons of doctors, trying to get different opinions, MRIs, x-rays, all this junk. And this is about three years ago that all of this happened. They did an MRI of my neck and they didn't see anything wrong. They said there was nothing. I don't know if you guys have experienced this in the medical industry, but God, can it be so frustrating to feel this just intense pain, a pain that you can't even function with. I mean, I had to drop out of school. I couldn't get a job. I had to just lay down on the couch all day, doing nothing, laying down, crying because I'm in pain and just super upset. And then to have someone kind of tell you, oh, there's nothing wrong, right? So they just guessed that I had a cervical sprain, that I tore ligaments in my neck, something or other, which I'm almost positive I did, but they didn't really find out why that happened. They didn't look very deeply into it. And at that point in time, it was like a spiral effect that everything that could go wrong was gonna go wrong. Every area of your body that could hurt was gonna end up hurting. This was a good seven to eight months of laying in the bed, laying on the couch, watching YouTube videos. As you guys know, during that time, because I couldn't do anything, that was what really drew me to YouTube and watching people because I, I had no social integration. I couldn't talk to anybody about anything because no one understood. So I really reached a low. 
a, a, a very, very low low. And it really helped to watch YouTubers because they're just normal people and feel like I'm still a part of something. A lot of my friends during this seven to eight month period were just MIA. They did not get it. They would text me and they would be like, hey, do you want to go here? Hey, do you want to hang out? I, I can't physically sit up without pain. It was so bad. So when I'm constantly saying no, they're just like, eh, whatever. Or if I try to tell them about the pain that I'm in, you know, and I don't blame them. I, I really don't. I don't blame them for not being able to understand because they haven't felt it before. They couldn't possibly understand. I really had wished at that time in my life that maybe for once they would just come over and hang out with me. But I think at 23, when they're all about 21, 22 or 23, everybody is ready to just go out and party and meet people. They don't want to come over to your house and lay down and watch movies, you know? I really felt alone. Whew. This is why I don't like to talk about these things because I just remember what it felt like. You guys already know that I am a super emotional person. I feel a lot of stuff, so <laughs> I'm crying right now, not because I feel bad for myself, but because I remember how lonely I felt and it pains me to think about someone else being in a similar situation. I hope that if there is anybody else that feels totally alone out there, you can take solace in knowing that someone has been there. I've, I've been there, I've been to that low point and you can make it through. I swear you can make it through this community can be there for you to talk to, to meet people, to keep in touch, to provide a, some sort of social integration. You know that that has always been my goal for this channel. Yeah, that was a super low point in my life. I remember on numerous occasions questioning why I was here, what was the point. I felt worthless, to be honest. I felt like I couldn't provide even for my friends, I couldn't provide for my significant. I mean, he was working constantly because of me being broken. I couldn't do school and and at that point in my life, you know, you, you really want to get through school. Like that that's what I wanted to do. To give you a little bit of backstory, I actually was going to school planning on getting a bachelor's in animal science or a bachelor's in wildlife and forestry. So kind of be like a agriculture type of background. I always wanted to work with animals. I've always wanted to work in a job where I can be outside and in nature. I love plants. I love everything natural. And in order to do that, you really have to have a degree because it is so competitive to get into. And what's really crazy is you don't earn a lot of money doing these jobs. Working with animals, you really don't make anything. It's for people who don't care about the money, they care about taking care of the environment, taking care of animals, being around nature. It's, it, it has always been a dream of mine. So at that point, when everything comes to a halt and I can't go to school, and I, I, I start to realize that this might not be a possibility for me, it was really hard for me to come to terms with. Okay, let's continue because I don't want this to turn into a super long video. Right around the seven to eight month mark, I started to have problems with my low back and my hip area. So the short amount of times that I would spend in the car just to go to a doctor's appointment or to maybe eat out for even a short period of time just to be out of the house, I would have just this excruciating pain in my low back burning, numbness, tingling, sciatica, all the sort of nerve problems that you expect to have when you, you're you a bit older, I guess, is the best way to put it. So it's back to the doctors, back to the MRI machine, back to x-rays. We finally figure out that in my low back, I have degenerative discs already. So my doctor's obviously looking at them and she's like, why do you have degenerative disc already? The reason why you see it a lot in older individuals is because through a lifetime of standing and sitting poorly or doing laborious jobs, people tend to get these issues 
So my doctor doesn't understand why I have this problem. She's kind of looking at me like I'm faking it. And it it's really frustrating to have somebody look at you like you're faking an issue when there's literally an MRI scan of the actual thing happening sitting in front of them. I think for, for those eight to nine months, she really felt like I was exaggerating because I was so young. And I find that really offensive. I actually hear about this problem happening a lot with people that are younger. They'll go through bouts of chronic pain or they'll, they'll have some sort of health issue and the health system looks at them like they're kind of making it up, which is the worst thing you can do for someone who is experiencing chronic pain. And I also understand that they don't want to give out a bunch of medication that somebody doesn't need. So I get that, but, but after nine months of, of just doing nothing, it was very upsetting to have somebody kind of look at me like in disbelief. Especially since naturally everyone I came in contact with, even my friends didn't really understand. You really hope that the doctor will at least understand. So I'd say another six, seven months go by. This pain is still extreme. I'm going through physical therapy and the pain just doesn't go away. I can only go to about one class at a time because the neck pain looking down is so extreme and at that point in time my back was so extreme I could not sit for shoot 30 minutes I mean 30 minute intervals is all I could do sitting up this was when I was super addicted to the Witcher so I'm like literally playing the Witcher 3 on my side laying down it was kinda hard but I did it so now we're at about a year and a half mark and the pain isn't going away and it's still really frustrating I feel like I haven't found answers I'm still pushing the doctor like, well, why is this stuff happening? She'll openly admit this shouldn't be happening to someone so young, but she won't really find a cause to it. So finally we get to the point where she's, she's like, okay, let's start digging. So we're digging through blood work. My dad actually has a type of muscular dystrophy. So that is the first thing they looked into. And that's a whole nother story itself. It's very painful to watch somebody with muscular dystrophy. Thankfully, I did not come up positive for that. They tested for lupus, they tested for Lyme disease, did not come up positive for any of those. So she's starting to push me into the, you might have fibromyalgia category. Fibromyalgia is essentially a way to, to diagnose chronic pain. It's kind of saying they don't really know why you have this pain, but you have this pain in your joints, in your muscles, in every like fiber of your being. Finally, after all this time, we had a friend who was actually becoming a nurse. She wasn't even a nurse yet. Ask my significant, well, does she have scoliosis? Do I mean, like, something that you would think to automatically check? So the next time I went into the doctor's office, I asked her, I was like, do I have scoliosis? After all these MRI treatments, they only looked at my neck and my low back. They didn't ever think to look at my spine. And what do you know, guys? I have scoliosis. <laughs> scoliosis is essentially my back is crooked. It probably happened as I was growing up through being a teenager, but didn't show symptoms of pain until it got more severe. My back is actually curved into an S shape. It starts like this and then, yeah. Really weird to look at on an x-ray, honestly. So in some way we can start to piece together the puzzle of why am I in so much pain? My spine is literally crooked, which puts stress on other ligaments, on muscles, the whole curvature of your body. It puts stress on organs that it might be pushing on. So that would explain why I have degenerative disc. It would explain a lot of the neck problems that I do end up having. So at this point in my life, I've kind of gotten used to a lot of the pain I have altered a lot of my life in order to avoid painful things. For example, with schooling, I know that I can't do long-term schooling. My health problems will not let me go to school. I, I struggle just taking two classes at a time because of the pain of looking down and taking notes. It hurts so bad. I had to alter a lot of my hobbies. When it comes to artwork, it's a little frustrating because I want to draw, I want to paint, but my body doesn't really like me doing those things. I usually end up 
paying for it for the next couple days. There's a lot of things like that that I have to take into account because of my body. Some days are definitely worse than others, but I have found a way to cope with them better. So when I say that I have a lot of bone, nerve, and muscle problems, that's kind of what I mean. I wouldn't change my health problems even though it has been a rough ride, only because I know that they have shaped me as a person. I've not only become more humble in life, but I've learned to appreciate the small things, all of the little things, to appreciate what your body can do, to appreciate the beauty in living every day. Not only that, but I've always been a sympathetic person, yes, but I do think that I've possessed more empathy after experiencing what I have. I understand what it's like to be the outcast. I understand how low you can really go. I wouldn't be here with you guys. I wouldn't be striving to build a community where everybody can be a part of something. I do feel like by making this video, a huge weight has kind of been lifted off of my shoulders. I feel like I'm no longer hiding anything from you guys or hiding some of the problems that I do have. I don't know if you notice in some of the videos, I fidget a lot. I'm always shifting to find a better position. I just feel like I've given you a piece of myself. I don't know, honestly, if it will help you by any means. Like I said, I'm not a motivational speaker, but I do want you to know that I understand you. And I want this channel to be somewhere that you can go and you can meet people and you can talk to people. I know that everybody deals with health problems in a different way, no matter the severity, no matter if it's mental or physical. I want this place to be a positive outlet for you, somewhere where you can come and relax and hang out. I want you to know that you are strong. You can pull through any health issues that you do have. You have the strength to make it. You have people there for you and you are not alone. I love you guys, stay positive, and I'm sorry if this was just kind of a rant. I don't really know how this video is gonna turn out. Regardless, it feels great to hang out with you all and to just talk with you, like, person to person. So thanks for watching, guys.